Alright guys, it is another cold winter day here in the paradise of East Bumblefuck, New Mexico, where I am hiding from the winds of blowing shit flying around uh, cranking up tomorrow in this country. So that means today is Thursday. January 19th, 2017. So January 19th, 2017 means this is the last full day that Farrakh Obama, Farrakh Obama has to cement his environmental legacy before Donald Trump takes over the reins in about 24 hours from right now, on January 20th, Donald Trump taking over the reins. So, since it is not only January 19th, 2017, it is also Thursday. What an interesting uh, dovetailing here in the universe. So, Thursday is the day I bring you my depressed collapsitarian whine not a rant, a whine. Uh, but it's, it's kind of hard. And so today, uh, the title of uh, this, I guess, is going to be A Depressed Collapsitarian Eco-Nazi Welcomes in the Age of Trump. And I don't know what you're, I don't know what's getting ready to come out of my mouth, guys. I really don't. I never know what's getting ready to come out of my mouth when I sit down in front of this camera. Uh, this is going to be kind of a hybrid between a, a, a whine and a rant. I, I, I can't have a whine about the looking at the dawn of the age of Trump w without mixing in some ranting. But, in, but anyway, and you know, I don't know what it is, and, and, and I truly am. I mean, all joking, I'm, I'm going to try to play this straight today, guys, for once. There, there's, don't worry, I'll be back to my old joking self uh, as soon as I can with my clueless moron roundup round on Saturday. But I'm going to try to play this straight today. And this is your old depressed collapsitarian just whining for anyone who wants to hear it. I genuinely am surprised by the way that I have been affected by the, by the election of, of Donald Trump as, as president of the United States. I, I understand the, that the level of twisted, sick, absurd, ironic humor in the election of Donald Trump to perhaps the single highest office on this planet, uh, it, 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 it absolutely delights me on, you know, on this sick, twisted, absurdist, ironic uh, way that I like to view the world. But uh, e even though I can intellectualize that, uh, I, I am genuinely surprised at, at how this has affected me. I have been more affected by the election of Donald Trump as, more, more than any other president, more than, than W stealing the election from Al Gore, more than, uh, than, than Ronald Reagan. Uh, you know, this is truly, I, I, I was saying on November 8th, uh, calling November 8th, you know, what will prove to be quite possibly the single darkest day in American history. Well, obviously it's not November, it's, it's tomorrow. That, that January 20th, 2017, all joking aside, could history will validate uh, over the next however many years. It might be the next week or, or it might take a uh, hundred years for the verdict to come in. That the future historians, when they are looking 
at, at the turning point in, in the American empire that January 20th, 2017, literally could be one of the most fundamentally important dates in American history. Uh, I, and, and, and just the fact, it, 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 I'm still not 100% able to take my brain there. Uh, the, the, what this means. And, and, and I don't know, guys, it, uh, I guess part of my this absolute refusal to believe that, that this could happen in this country and on this planet by whatever reason uh, is, is, is I guess just for, for years it's just been an automatic just default assumption in my little uh, collapsed, uh, my depressed collapsed during Econazi brain that Hillary Clinton was, was going to be the one that I was going to be having this whine about. It never occurred to me. I went to bed at midnight on election night believing that I was going to wake up the next morning and find that Hillary Clinton was, uh, was the new president. And of course, this was before I, uh, I understood that Hillary Clinton did, in fact, win the popular vote uh, by about three million votes, but I'm not going to get off into an electoral college rant in the middle of my depressed collapsitarian wine. And, and just in case there's anybody out there who, who doesn't know me, uh, I have always said, although I'm getting ready to talk about this in more depth, that uh, I, I absolutely despise Hillary Clinton. There is not one thing in this in this rant or whine about Donald Trump can, can be construed uh, that that I do not consider Hillary Clinton to be you know being anything other than a, a evil lying sack of shit corporate whore war criminal, you know, and so for all of this time, I mean, going, you know, just the natural assumption, so I thought that what I was going to be facing today was just, it was just my depressed collapsitarian whine about goddamn Hillary Clinton moving into the White House, and, and, and basically what my my view of Hillary Clinton was that four to eight years of Hillary Clinton would be absolutely horrible for this country and more importantly for this planet. And, and remember, I filter everything through an eco-Nazi lens, okay? I mean, I don't even have to open up any other part of the can of worms with Trump or Hillary. Uh, it, it is the eco-Nazi lens that I filter, so filtering, uh, filtering Hillary Clinton through my eco-Nazi eco lens, I just assumed, and I will stand by this assumption, had she been elected, that it would have just been four to eight more years of the tightening of the noose, that it would have just been a continuation of the Bill Clinton years and the Barack Obama years. And... Uh, and that if, if, if you think that if you're a clueless fucking moron who believes for one second that either Bill Clinton or Barack Obama uh, had an environmental legacy and, and, and you think that they were, they were good for this planet uh, on any level... You probably would be a clueless fucking moron about Hillary Clinton. Now I under I understand that Hillary Clinton would just be taking this planet uh, that much closer to uh, to ecological collapse, but it, it was just the same, just the just the noose tightening that I call it, just the cranking down of the noose. Uh, uh, of this planet and, and every species of earthling we share this planet with. So I thought this is what I was, 
I was going to be ranting about. And, and then I would just, when, when someone w would, would even uh, make the absurd contention to me that there was, that there was any difference uh, between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, I would just laugh them off and act like that it's six of one and a half dozen of the other. But now that I'm facing the, 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 the cold, hard fact that Donald Trump uh, is, is actually taking over the reins uh, from the, the Clinton-Obama cabal, uh, Mike, and here's what I have to say to myself for my, for my uh, just off-the-cuff unanalyzed claim that Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton made no difference towards the collapse of this planet. I've pulled my head out of my ass. Uh, there is a huge fucking difference between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. You know, with uh, it's an old joke, I've said it, but I say it many times about when you think you've hit bottom, you hear knocking from below. Donald Trump is the knocking from below from the bottom that, that Hillary Clinton would have, would have represented. And, 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 and I'm trying to analyze my, my own emotional, my, my own just, just gut emotional response, which, which can only be described as it's just an absolute sense of impending dread. It's just dread. If, if I had to sum up my emotion in one word going, going into the, to the, the age of Trump, it would be dread uh, on every single level. And uh, so what is the, you know, so Hamma, what is the difference between if, if Hillary Clinton and going there and Donald Trump? Well, you know, at least with Hillary, which is the same as with, uh, with Obama and Bill and, 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 and pretty much every president, uh, it, it, it's, the, it's this whole man behind the curtain thing that it, at least... Uh, th these fucking corporate whore cockroaches, they, they, they did their evil work, you know, back in the shadows, like, like, you know, the fucking cockroaches that they are, that at least they, they kept it out of our faces, you know, it, it, you didn't have to shine much of a light on them uh, to, to understand what these evil motherfuckers are, are, are doing to this planet. Uh, th th these goddamn corporate horror uh, planet eaters are doing, but at least it just wasn't in your face what they were doing. And, and, and occasionally, occasionally, that they would throw these limp dick mainstream environmentalists a bone. I mean, every once in a while, it, for, the, for the sole reason, just to shut them up, just to get them off the trail is, is what these little bones that uh, Barack Obama has thrown us, namely, and, 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 and all, no joking aside, hats off to Barack Obama about creating these, quote, national monuments both on land and in the ocean. Good for you, Barack Obama. This is the one way that Barack Obama uh, can cement. If, if Barack Obama has an environmental legacy, it's for these national monuments. What these national monuments are, and don't get me wrong, thank you, Barack Obama, for the bone. That's what they are. They are a little bone thrown to the limp dick mainstream environmentalist to shut them up. 
So Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, and, and all of these evil fucking corporate horse scumbags can go right on about their cockroach business back in the shadows. And, and while all these limp dicks cheering on Barack Obama and his bullshit environmental legacy. And it would have been four to eight more years of the same uh, under Hillary Clinton. At least we would have gotten a few bones thrown our way. But God damn it, looking ahead at, at, uh, at, 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 at goddamn Trump. Uh, you know, it's no longer back in the shadows. You know, it, it, the guy is rubbing our faces in it. He, it, he, is, he is braying his clueless moron ignorance about the most fundamental uh, ecological concepts uh, governing life on Earth. He does not care about life on Earth. Life on Earth does not enter Donald Trump's consciousness. And, and, and he is, he's literally rubbing our faces in it. And we're not even going to get a fucking bone thrown our way for the next four to eight years. Well, we're going to have one big bone, but, but it ain't going to be thrown to us to shut us up. It's going to be rammed up our asses. It's going to be one big bone rammed up Mother Earth's butt is what we're looking at, guys. Uh, do you think Donald Trump is going to create one acre of national monuments in four to eight years? It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. There, there will be not, and there will be no bones thrown to the to the little eco whiners. Uh, you, you know, the the eco Nazi has been completely marginalized off the face of the planet. We will, we are more despised than than ever, and. Uh, you, you know, and, 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 and the, the other thing is uh, obviously what's, what's happened between November 9th and January 17th is, is this goddamn uh, what I call the horsemen of the apocalypse that this fucker is surrounding himself with. How many times do I have to say that the onion, the onion could not have written this script? You know, if if it was just Donald Trump, if it was just this fucking buffoon, uh, you, you know, that makes that little maggot in North Korea sound somewhat reasonable. Uh, you know, this fucking buffoon, if it was just him up there, you, you know, uh, just twitting, twitting, what do they call it? Tweeting, I'm sorry, twitting. Tweeting, braying his ignorance uh, on his little Twitter account. Y you know, you could laugh this off. It's kind of like, like we do about that little, uh, the tubby tyrant over there in North Korea. You do understand that starting tomorrow, that North Korea and the United States and every other country that Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un are, you know, they're, they're cosmic twins. They're, he, he's our tubby little tyrant. But, uh, you know, so, but if it was just Donald Trump, uh, it's one thing, but my God, look at these fuckers. It's no fucking joke, people. You know, Rex Tillerson, who I have labeled, been labeling, uh, you know, uh, seven and a half billion people on this planet. Seven and a half billion people on this planet. First, there is probably one person on this planet of seven and a half billion people that I would less like to see in the White House than Hillary Clinton. If there was one person, not just out of the 320 million and seven and a half billion people, if there is one fucking person on this planet that uh, I, I, I would prefer not to see in the White House than Hillary Clinton, it, it, it's... it's this guy, but uh, is Donald Trump himself. But you know, who have I been calling for five years 
the single biggest planet eater on planet Earth is Rex Tillerson. And having Donald Trump looking around this country for, for the Secretary of State, you know, essentially the most powerful political appointment that he's going to make. And who does he choose? Who does he choose? Out of seven and a half billion people, he chooses Hambone Little Tails, number one, number one planet eater on planet Earth. The CEO of Exxon Mobil, who I'm glad to see, is up against the ropes. I, God, what I would give for uh, Rex Tillerson to be shot down in the ring the next few days. Uh, it ain't going to happen. I'm still saying, uh, you know, he's going to make it. But, but just the idea, and, and, and anybody on this planet who thinks Rex Tillerson is a joke, I got one thing to tell you, all joking aside. Rex Tillerson, the, the Secretary of Oil Deals, uh, is no fucking joke, people. He's no fucking joke. And, and, and neither are these other guys, uh, the, these uh, horsemen of the apocalypse. You know, Rick Perry, Rick Perry in any position on this planet, bar one, would be a joke. If he's, if he's dancing with the stars, he's a joke. But if he's the Rick Perry, are you reading me, guys, is our new energy secretary, a board member of the Dakota Access Pipeline, which, of course, you know, he did resign this week, obviously, before his confirmation hearing. He, he, he resigned from uh, being a board member on the Dakota Access Pipeline. Reading about Rick Perry, do, do you know how long Rick Perry's confirmation hearing took in the Senate? To be our new energy secretary, this oil man, this Texas oil man, three and a half hours, three and a half hours yesterday from the time that man walked in the door till the time he walked out uh, as our new energy secretary, this Texas oil man. Uh, it's no joke, people. Uh, this fucker, Scott Pruitt, head of the EPA, this, this zinc guy, uh, head of interior. Uh, I, I haven't heard one word about it. The, the, the whole discussion of who the fuck is the, secre is the agriculture secretary. You know, it's the Department of Agriculture that runs the, uh, the U.S. forest system. Most people think that the U.S. forest system is under, uh, is under interior. No. The National Park System in BLM is under this planet eater, this Mr. Zink, who I think, has he been approved? I think he has. Uh, no, uh, I haven't heard a goddamn word on who's going to be uh, head of... Uh, head of agriculture, you know, ultimately the boss of the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, guys, you know, if you are a depressed collapsitarian and, and, and you're looking ahead, it's hard to, you know, not to go Michael Rupert. Uh, I was listening to this excellent, excellent interview with Graham Hancock last night. I heard it's called, uh, oh, sh everything, it's all bullshit. Go on YouTube and search uh, Graham Hancock, it's all bullshit. And I can't remember exactly what Graham was referring to somewhere in this interview, was talking about an extinction, oh yeah, he was talking about this comet that supposedly uh, hit the planet uh, 12,000 years ago uh, and caused all of this disruption that people, when they hear about this, they don't understand. And he's going, and he was saying something like, we're not talking about a, a, this comet hitting the planet. 
you know, it wasn't a bad hair day. It was an extinction level event. And, and, and all joking aside, the, uh, the inauguration of Donald Trump could damn well be an extinction level event on this planet from all sorts of directions, not just the eco-Nazi direction. Uh, you, you know, you think I'm, you think I'm fucking joking. If, if there's anybody who thinks that, that I'm just being, you know, you know, one of my sick, twisted uh, exaggerations, calling the inauguration of Donald Trump not only one of the darkest days in the history of this country, but it very well, it very well could be instrumental in setting off a planetary-wide extinction-level event. And time will tell. Uh, you know, guys, I mean, all bets are off. Starting in 24 hours, all bets are off. Everything is on the table now. There, there is nothing that you or I can imagine in, in, in our most perverse, sick, twisted, dark, eco-Nazi fantasies that's not on the table tomorrow. At least with Hillary Clinton, a few things might have been off the table. But, but, but not with Donald Trump. Uh, you, you know, trying to make uh, dooms... trying to be a doomsday prophet after tomorrow and, and, and predicting uh, it, it, what's going to come down in, in this country starting the minute the guy's elected or in the next four to eight years, uh, assuming the man makes it that long. And uh, there's plenty of people predicting that this is a no-brainer that Donald Trump uh, isn't going to make it very long into his presidency. Then, of course, we have President Pence. But, you, but, if, but if they bump off Trump, it's still going to be Tillerson, uh, secretary, it's going to be Pence's Secretary of State. Uh, fucking Rick Perry is still going to be the Energy Secretary. This Planet Eater Zinc is still going to be Interior Secretary. This Planet Eater uh, Pruitt it is still going to be the head of the EPA. It, it, it's going to be an absolute feeding frenzy uh, for every planet e eater on this planet. Uh, you know, bank stocks are up, Caterpillar stock is up, John Deere tractors are up. Uh, and, and, and it's going to be a rocket ride. The, the, the only, the only ray of sunshine, and again, th this is no fucking joke that uh, it is, but it isn't. I mean, it's the ultimate joke. You know, being an eco-Nazi, I am cheering on the collapse and fall of global industrial civilization. I understand if, if we have any chance of saving this planet, meaning every other species of Earthling we share this planet with, we need to topple global industrial civilization. And I cannot think of one better candidate for that position on this planet than Donald Trump. If there is one man on this planet who can, who can set into motion the, uh, the long overdue collapse and fall of global industrial civilization, it's Donald Trump. And so, uh, from that level, I'm cheering on Donald Trump, if he can do that. But, 
Uh, you know, as Terrence McKenna was saying uh, over 20 years ago, you know, it, it's going to be a photo finish uh, between uh, global industrial civilization on one hand and the planet on the other. And in, 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 in no words uh, that, that Terence McKenna ever spoke or any truer than that on the, uh, on the uh, you know, everything he talked about, the photo finish is coming up on this planet. You know, it, it's either global industrial civilization uh, with or without Don, the help of Donald Trump is coming down or this planet's coming down. Uh, or they're both coming down. And uh, that, that's my guess, is, uh, is, is that they're both coming down. And, you know, just, just, just how, this is, uh, how this is impacting me uh, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, you guys, uh, here I sit. I mean, I, I'm here at the end of a dirt, not at the end of a dirt, I'm at the, I'm at the end of the paved road. Uh, the, at least the end of the paved road out of the middle of fucking nowhere. Uh, living in a 110-year-old adobe house with a well with a hand pump. And, you know, in a big organic garden is where I'm going to be uh, welcoming the age of Trump. I've got the White Sands Missile Range set up between me and Washington, D.C. Uh, guys, it's going to be a rocket ride. And we're going to have some sick, twisted laughs along the way. But... Uh, but all joking aside, smoke them if you got them. We are so fucked. And so you call that, was that a whine or a rant? And so I will wrap up my final depressed collapsitarian whine of the Barack Obama age, say... Thanks for the bones, Barack Obama. We do appreciate the bones. And uh, goodbye, Barack Obama. Hello, Donald Trump. If I have not gone Michael Rupert in the next seven days, I will be back at you. Uh, next Thursday with my first Age of Trump depressed collapsitary and wine. Uh, tomorrow, of course, what I'm going to be doing on Friday while, uh, while Donald Trump is taking the baton from Barack Obama, I will be back at you with my ecological meltdown roundup rant for the five or six people on this planet who will be attending to it. Bye, guys. What do you think of the age of Trump? Sancho Panza. Are you depressed? Depressed little dog. <laughs>